Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start at the very least on my review of Twas the Fright Before Christmas and Deathlyhem, an anthology of holiday horrors for charity, edited by Michael J. Evans and Harrison Graves. Before I get into this, I should mention my story is in this, Black Solstice. Um, obviously, I'm not going to re review it with that in mind, but I am going to take a look at the rest of the stories. I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs and share my overall thoughts and rating at the end, but before, before we do that, the blurb. Dane reads... Twas the fright before Christmas, nightmare fill my head. The creatures there are prowling till everyone is dead. Welcome back to Deathlyhem, where a stranger grants a grieving father's Christmas wish. Charitable acts are purely self-serving. A man plans his last Christmas in a post-apocalyptic world. A serial killer targets the wrong victim. Sometimes it's better not to go home for the holidays, and more. 17 more tales of holiday horrors to benefit the Elizabeth Glazer Pediatric AIDS Foundation. So, the stories included in this, we have The Fine Print by Janet Alcorn, Black Solstice by Dane Cobain, The Chimney by R.A. Clark, Convicted by Mike Marcus, Last Supper by Liam Hogan, Part and Parcel by Nathan D. Ludwig, Pond Person by Evan Bothman, Not a Creature Was Stirring by DJ Kozlowski, Silent Scream by C.L. Hart, Christmas in Four Parts by Lisa H. Owens, End of the Line by James Jenkins, The Yule Lads Are Coming by Villamy Mist, Spirit of the Season by Paul O'Neill, A Christmas Snuff Story by Dino Parenti, Little Helpers by Matt Starr, That Christmas Feeling by D.S. O'Leary, and Mad Shadow by Bam Barrow. So let's check out some tabs. I wanted to highlight this in the Gultide Greetings, which is uh, like the letter from the editor, Michael J. Evans and the staff at Grinning School Press. And so they said, and let's see, what other horrors will you encounter when you turn the page? Mmm, let's see. In Dane Kermain's Black Solstice, you'll meet a family preparing for a holiday and a possible visit from, but wait, that can't happen because he doesn't exist. He only exists in stories parents tell their children so they'll behave. But little do they know. And so yeah, I wanted to start with that first story, The Fine Print uh, by Janet Alcorn. Really enjoyed this story. It's about a guy who makes a deal with the devil to bring his dead daughter back. And uh, she died on Christmas, so his daughter died on Christmas. Um, and they're talking about how rough that is. And it makes me think I have a friend, well, I had a friend called Tom Larvin, who uh, he died in a car crash. He went to school with me and he died when he was about 19. Um, but I always feel bad for him and especially for his parents because they after every Christmas day, it was his birthday. But yeah, I referenced the Mariah Carey singing All I Want For Christmas Is You and all he wanted for Christmas was Emmy, his daughter. We got a reference to Pet Cemetery because um, the guy says, I can make your daughter live. What's the catch? She comes back but I die like that guy or she's all messed up like, no, none of that pet cemetery shit. But there are other catches. And we learn, basically, he has to sacrifice another child to bring his child back to life. And we learn that's how she died in the first place. Someone else chose her. Very spooky. All right, Black Solstice by myself. And uh, just introduced by that very cool little image there. Awesome stuff. Uh, and I'm now going to move on to The Chimney by R.A. Clark. Um, mostly interesting because this is prose, but it's kind of prose poetry with internal rhyming. Uh, that's all I really tabbed out for that one. An example is, um, she'd been toying with me right from the start, a desperate traveller with right body parts. My memories flashed slowly, stuck on replay. Grithelda hummed softly while I fade away. So on to Convicted by Mike Marcus. This was a really good little story. This was about a guy who steals from, kind of like a gypsy. I don't know what you would call them. Not a gypsy, because that's considered not cool. Um, a traveller. He steals from a traveller who is like into the black magic kind of thing. So I thought this was cool. Um, he goes into a diner and we get, the booth halfway down the front of the diner was close enough to the doors to keep an eye on who was entering, but distant enough for a quick exit out the back door in case of trouble. It was a prison habit, like deciding where to hit for chow. And I love that kind of stuff. I think it's always really fun. Um, and it reminds me of you get the policeman's seat, which is the seat in the pub where you've got your back to the wall in a corner so that you can see everybody. Okay, on to part and parcel by Nathan D. Ludwig. We start here with Fuck Christmas and it's stupid ass Miles Ford mumbled as he exhaled in utter defeat. And that just made me chuckle because my friend Dave, Dave Ford, he's written a song called Fuck Christmas. Um, and yeah, he, he ends up applying to a job to become a mall Santa because he's kind of a deadbeat dad. And he says, um, he didn't hate his kids, it was just having to be around them that bothered him. He loved the idea of kids and goofing around with them, but that was where it ended. He was solid uncle material that fooled himself into thinking he was dad material. And uh, so he goes for this interview and they asked him if he's ever participated in binge eating, um, and whether he's ever had bulimia or anorexia, and he thinks, why would she ask a guy that? And I'm like, it's not just a male illness, you know? Okay, then we have Pond Person by Ivan Bothman. This is about two brothers. Um, the older brother kind of teases the little brother a little bit. And I thought what was called, cool, there's a monster in this and um, 
Kyle, the younger brother, he goes, This creature's pretty popular in Inuit folklore. Wonder what one of them's doing so far south. My guess, global warming, which I thought was kind of a cool little sort of insight there. And then the monster is taking his older brother away and uh, Kyle kind of says, I'm not strong enough. Maybe you'll like that brother better than you like me. And I just love the fact that he gets his comeuppance for being a dick to his brother, you know? Okay, then we get Not A Creature Was Stirring by DJ Kozlowski. I didn't tab too much for that. Then we get Silent Scream by C.L. Hart, which kind of comes in three parts. Um, one thing I didn't like about this is um, somebody goes, bloody hell, this place looks like Miami Vice meets Friday night. And then about halfway down that page, someone plays the theme to Miami Vice. And it's not addressed. So it just seemed like an accidental double use rather than something intentional, you know? But yeah, a reference to COVID, somebody eating peanuts from the communal bowl before the days of COVID. And this story's got kind of like House of Wax vibes as well. Um, one of the characters here is the drummer for a Motorhead cover band, which I thought was cool because I have a friend who's in a Motorhead cover band. They're, they're, they're called Motorbeard. We get a reference to incels in this story as well. And then we get author's notes of quite a lengthy little section here. So he says, uh, the Crouch End mentioned in this work references Stephen King's 1980 story of the same name. Um, uh, he's got original characters. Some of the characters come from Lovecraft. And he references some songs as well. Then we have Christmas in Four Parts by Lisa H. Owens. Uh, and this is another well, this one's weird because it goes between poetry and prose, which I, I didn't really work for me. I, I wasn't a fan of like... thing is, I don't like rhyming poetry, and so the rhyming poetry in this, you know, I was a bit like, eh. And I liked in that, though, uh, that Krampus is the bad guy, and he's, he has a sleigh pulled by an army of corpse rats, which I thought was cool. Okay, End of the Line by James Jenkin. Didn't have anything for that, and that brings me to The Yule, Cl the Yule Lads Are Coming by Villamy Mist, which, let me just say, for a start, cracking author name. And this is set in Iceland, and there was lots of kind of references to Iceland, and also the Yule Lads are an Icelandic Christmas tradition. Uh, but I just thought that was cool, because I'm going to Iceland in, like, two weeks as of the time of filming. By the time you're seeing this, I've probably already been. There's a mistake in this though, it, there's a sentence that just goes, the was on his back on the ground, and I believe there's supposed to be a noun in there somewhere. And they get a load of shit in the sink and somebody goes, now be straight with me, you haven't been having any stomach problems recently, like irritable bowel syndrome or something. Hey, I have irritable bowel syndrome and I do not shit in sinks. And then we get this great little bit here, I'm just going to read you this paragraph because I love a nice bit of, sort of, I guess, body horror. His words transformed into screams of agony as Candle Stealer poured the wax into his open eyes. Instinct hit his brain and demanded he shut them, but the Yule Lads had a firm grip. His corneas blistered, a white hot searing blazing through his skull like a comet. So here we are in Spirit of the Season by Paul O'Neill. Uh, this has a misspelling of Alter, it has the wrong version of Alter in it. A uh, Christmas Snuff Story by Dino Parenti, this was an interesting one. Um, it's got like almost portal fantasy to it and then horror because obviously a snuff film is being made. And then we have Little Helpers by Matt Starr and what did I tap here? So this has a cat um, which wants some food and he, and he, well we get, he fixed her a bowl of wet food and she ate it and threw it up and ate it again, which is a very cat thing to do. And basically we get a standoff between the cops and the elves and the cop, one of the cops goes, who the fuck are these freaks? You tell me Barney Fife, Wendell said, I don't fucking know. Walther added her two cents. Looks like them bobbits, or whatever the hell it is those nerds watch on the web pics. And I really liked a line in this, um, talking about a reindeer, and it describes it as having silver bell eyes. Uh, then we have uh, a couple more stories to finish on, and then the author bios. Uh, but I didn't have anything else out from this, but as you can tell, I enjoyed this a lot. Some really great indie horror here. A nice wide range of things. Perfect book for Christmas, but equally you could enjoy this at any time of the year. Um, I gave it a strong 4 out of 5, and would recommend it, especially because all the proceeds go to charity. So there we have it, that's what I made of Twas the Fright Before Christmas and Deathlyhem, an anthology of holiday horrors for charity, edited by Michael J. Evans and Harrison Graves. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. <laughs>